Who wants to hold up the fish? <laughs> Ooh. That looks like a fancy camera. Slay them. Not really, just one. Played. It. Played it. Let's see. Started out really, really dirty water. It's actually a nice one. <clears throat> Elusive checker grouper. Whoa! You changed colors. <laughs> right? It's really weird. It's a beautiful one. Is that Kipple? Right? Yeah. Beautiful fish. Who shot it? Uh, <laughs> it was a team effort. Is that right? Team effort. Grossness in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That was perfect. <laughs> oh, rib section. Will's actually going to take this and put that on his channel. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will. We're down here in Key West and I'm with Aaron, also Key West Waterman. So one of the things about living with Aaron every day is like Christmas, meaning I get one or two messages. One message is, hey, want to go on the boat? I'm going to go shoot some stuff or fish for something. That's a great morning. Or the morning that he goes on the boat, I get the text, Hey, I just caught this. Do you want anything from it? So today he nailed, what is that? About 20 pounds? 20 pound black grouper, yeah. 20 pound black grouper. Um, season is right now, they have to be 22 inches? Four inches. 24 inches. Um, he was diving in about 70 feet today. So well out of my wheelhouse anyway. Um, but, so a fish that big the ribs on it, I've done it in another episode, but this time we're gonna do kind of Chinese style ribs. Um, if you ever get them from Chinese takeout and they have that weird red color, I'll explain that later, but we're gonna try to mimic that with a brine and then smoke them, and we're gonna get them as close to Chinese ribs as possible. But check these out. There you are. So as always on the channel, I like pointing out things that would be discarded or, you know, thrown away, not utilized, left on the fish, thrown back to the tarpon, whatever it is, we are going to use these. So I'm going to separate each bone inside here and make an individual rib and I'll clean those up in a minute. So like I said, it's like Christmas all over again. Aaron's hands are already dirty, so he's going to French up these uh, ribs for me. Since he's already on the table, but skin off. You want them individual, right? Yep. Bone spare grouper. <laughs> oh. oh no, it's so short. That's a short rib. <laughs> <laughs> that was a layup. <laughs> short rib. That was a good one.
So we have these all individual now, and there's a bone that runs down the middle, and that bone is actually gonna help keep these moist, but there's so much fat in the belly meat, it's not gonna need much. And we're gonna brine them and then smoke them, so they're not gonna get dried out, and then we're gonna pan sear them. So these should be really fantastic by the time we're done with them. So if you've ever had Chinese ribs, spare ribs, from Chinese takeout, it has that unnatural red color. Most of the time, yes, it's just food dye, but where that comes from is actually the color red in Chinese culture is a very auspicious, lucky color. So they dye things red for like anniversaries, birthdays, or whatever. Um, what it originally was, was fermented red rice. And now we can't get that down here. <laughs> so they ground it up and they would roll it on the meat and that would lend the red color to the meat. But what I can get down here is actually a natto, also known as a chote. A chote grows down in tropical climates, so the Caribbean, think South America, and it's the seeds, and it has a little bit of a sweet, kind of sweet, nutty flavor to it. So that's gonna be really good on our fish ribs and it's gonna lend the red color. I also have in here star anise, which is kind of a cross, has a little bit of a licorice smell, clove and kind of cinnamon, and then just a couple of pepper, peppercorns. Now, normally you would put that in a uh, mortar and pestle, but I'm cheating. I have here a coffee grinder, we're throwing it in. Putting that right onto our ribs. Now these are gonna go into a brine, so that's okay that that's covering that like that. It's all gonna be washed off. And a little bit of rice vinegar. The acidity in the rice vinegar is gonna bloom that annatto and really drive it into the fish, the coloring. But the vinegar is also going to do something else. The acidity is going to cook our fish a little bit. So I'm only gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna get it into our brine. Our brine, which I have to my right here, is equal parts brown sugar and salt. And that, I am going to pour warm water over, let that sit until the water cools, and then we will throw our ribs in there, then they're going in the fridge and sitting overnight. So this was water that was brought up to a boil. And right now it's just a little bit above room temperature. It's warm just to dissolve that uh, salt and sugar. So I'm gonna wait until everything dissolves and that this cools down a bit because I don't wanna throw my fish into a hot brine between the vinegar and the hot brine it will cook all the way through so i'm gonna let this cool down and we'll see you in a minute my brine is sufficiently cooled so now i can put the fish in without it boiling the fish my fish has been sitting just for a little bit and i am interested to see if the annatto or the achote actually colors this red we will find out tomorrow I think as it sits in here, it will. I'm gonna throw a lid on that, throw it in the fridge, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Pulled my ribs out of the brine. They didn't take on a red color, but they took on a little bit of an orangish color. Take a look. And that's another good thing to do when you're smoking fish is uh, take it out of the brine, put it on a rack and put it in the fridge and actually let it dry. What that does, I believe it's called a pellicle. Um, 
it develops a little bit of a sticky surface on top and that helps the smoke stick to the fish. Um, someone taught me that a while ago and it's a really good little trick. Now the other thing we're gonna throw into the smoker is we're gonna make a sauce to glaze on top about halfway through. And what I have here is brown sugar, garlic salt, onion powder, paprika, and then that's just butter and chili paste. Now when that heats up and liquefies, we'll mix that up and then we will spread it on top of our ribs. I'm gonna to try to keep that heat between 250 and 275. So an hour in, we're gonna stir up that glaze, put it on top, and then let the, li the ribs ride for at least another hour, and then we'll pull them. It is time to pull the ribs from the smoker, and let me tell you, they look amazing. Check this out. Now, because it had some belly meat on it, it has a lot of fat on it, the grouper, and the bone is in the middle, we brined it. All those things are gonna help it stay moist but at the same time, I can take them a little bit further than I would any other piece of fish, meaning I want them to be a little bit chewy, not chewy in a rubbery sense, but have a chew to them almost like a pork rib, um, which I know that's counterintuitive to fish, that you want it to be light and flaky, but I want these to mimic pork. I want them to be able to take a bite off and rip it off with your teeth. So after I pull these, I'm gonna put them in the fridge, I'm gonna let them completely cool down, and then we're gonna sear them to get a nice crust on one side of them. I got my skillet warmed up to uh, medium low heat because with all the brown sugar in there, I think these are gonna brown, blacken actually, pretty quickly. I want a little bit of char on one side. So we're gonna test one out. Sounds good to me. This is also a very dangerous place to be if one of these spits. So I'm going to let those cook for a minute until, like I said, I get that little bit of caramelization of the brown sugar on the outside, that little bit of char, and then uh, give them a flip and take them off. They smell absolutely amazing. I don't cook with a natto or a chote really, so it's a very hard smell for me to describe. It's a bit woody. It's, uh, it's an interesting smell. A lot of the brown sugar is coming off of the turmeric. I'm familiar with those, the onion powder. 
but uh, that annatto is a very specific smell. Very nice. Oh yeah. That is what I want. That is perfect. I'm only gonna do one side actually. Get those going and then take them off and put another batch on. I could not be happier with these. They're absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna chop up some scallions, put those on top, and I have a little bit of Chinese mustard on the side here. And then we're ready to eat. <laughs> all right we brought i brought him upstairs I'm excited. at this point you should know aaron and madeline <laughs> <laughs> this is a very sexy presentation this by is, the way like what an awful life <laughs> so do i just eat the whole thing yeah I'm, get in there there's, no there's a bone in the middle oh okay yeah, yeah <laughs> madeline needs that disclaimer because <laughs> yes. i'm going in what is this sauce that's just mustard chinese mustard so they were supposed to be like Chinese ribs, but wow. they're kind of just like regular ribs. Oh my. So. Whoa. Oh my God. It really doesn't make sense when you're eating it. This is weird. It has like, like definitely has like, it, it almost tastes like you grilled it. You can taste the smoke. Mm. Wow. This is really good. Hold on, I'm processing. <laughs> I love the crunchy char. Mm. Aha. You literally can taste the char. The char yeah. is like very noticeable. I think I think the char was key because I just I really wanted them to mimic. A rib the char makes it not. Gum. The char makes it not taste like fish almost. Yeah, that's what, that's, th that's what throws you off. I wanted them to be a bit porky. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, I'm going in. Wow! 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 These are really good. Ooh. Oh, have you ever had it yet? Mm-mm. Oh my god, that crunch is to die for. That's what I'm saying. It's like, that's a hard thing to do on a fish. To get it's, that. It's that like tripping my mind that this is It's fish. the brown sugar. So it's the it's the marinade and it's the uh, the brine that we put it in. But, I mean, if you can see that, they are juicy. Like, I smoke those for two hours yep, and then you can sear see them. They still shimmer. Yeah. And it also, I put a lot of butter on them. Mm, that's my <laughs> favorite. <laughs> Another way of Malin. All right. We're going to smash this plate of food. Guys, if you like the episode, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.